Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about breaking down complex studies. Because my guess is you've done some studies that look like this. Very straightforward, single object on sort of a plain background. But I could also guess that you've avoided studies like this one. Because what I've done here is I've taken this complicated photo, modified it a little bit, and then I ended up with this study. And it took me a couple hours. So over the course of three videos, what I'm going to do is show you how I made this. But instead of focusing on the sort of moment by moment painting techniques, I'm going to talk about the concepts that allow me to tackle something so complicated. Because really it's more of a puzzle or problem solving than it is strictly painting details. And I think once you've seen the process in action, it'll make photos like these a lot less intimidating. The way I like to think of it, there's sort of three guidelines to work on an image like this one. And the first is that we want to capture the essence and that we're not cameras, we're illustrators. And what that means is that there's never going to be a situation in your artwork where you copy a photo exactly for the background of your painting. You're going to have specific needs. So your reference is going to inform your painting for sure, but you're not copying. So what we need to understand as illustrators is how to capture the feeling or the essence of a street scene like this one. And actually copying it one-to-one -one isn't really all that useful. So the second idea is to tell a clear story. For instance, if we were to make a painting that was a street scene like this one, but not this exact one, it probably wouldn't look so confusing. We would use the rules of composition design to kind of make it more clear, and the viewer would know where to move their eyes. So the second thing I want to do when I make a study like this one is to modify it in such a way that it becomes more clear than the original photo. And then finally, we want to learn repeatable lessons. Because ultimately what we're doing here is we're doing a study that on its own is not a finished piece of artwork. All it does is teaches us something about street scenes in general, and then we'll remember that later when doing illustrations. And in fact, if we were to just do a one-to-one -one copy, a very, very careful analytical painting, there's actually a chance that we learn less because we're focused so tightly on reproducing what we see that we're not taking away sort of rules of thumb. We're not simplifying in such a way that we can reuse that later for our own paintings. So instead of copying, we are trying to capture the essence, we're trying to tell a clear story, and we're trying to learn repeatable lessons. And you could sum all those three things up through the word simplification. So the first major simplification I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna crop the photo down because everything starts with an intention and my intention for this study is to learn more about houses. It's an architectural piece. So I don't really care about this bottom half of the image. So I'm just gonna crop out all this grass below. And the next thing I wanna do is get rid of these people because especially when it's cropped this way, the people are really only a distraction. I want to focus on the architecture. So I'm going to use some Photoshop tricks to get rid of them. I happen to be using Content Aware Fill, which is very cool if you ever used it. And I'm also just going to do a little bit of basic paint over to kind of just get rid of the people. And then finally, I want to change the colors of this scene a little bit. This certainly isn't required, but I'm trying to sort of envision the final painting I'm going for. And I just kind of want the palette to be a little bit different. Now remember, photos aren't true to life. This is not a snapshot of a perfectly realistic scene. There's a lot of variables that lead to color being skewed in one way or another, so there's really nothing sacred about the color of a photo. You're not cheating by changing it for your reference. Remember, we're trying to clarify or make something more simple, so you really have creative license to make whatever changes you want. Now the final aspect that I'm going to do to get ready for my study is to make a line drawing. And a line drawing can be a lot of different things. Sometimes I make a very clean, specific line drawing. Not so in this case. I know the next phase is going to involve a lot of problem solving. I'm going to be sort of changing things from the way they look in the photo. And with that in mind, having a looser line drawing actually allows me a little more freedom when it comes to messing with my block in. So I've sped this footage up because there's really nothing special going on here. I'm just looking at the photo and I'm making a line drawing but this is really just a very rough guide that's gonna help me with my block in, not very specific. But it's really in the next phase that we're gonna make these interesting creative choices and are gonna really start simplifying. So stay tuned for the next video when we're gonna make the block in. And if you wanna follow along, I encourage you to find a similarly complicated photo and make a line drawing. Cause this is really one of those processes that is understood best by doing it. 
So start your study and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.